Okay, my name's Steve Moyer, and I'm here with Dan DeMaio. Hi, Dan. Hey. And we're going to do a video on radiation health and what you can do to uh, keep yourself healthy. Now, maybe uh, some of this information is correct and some of it's incorrect. We're, we're basically just uh, giving you what we've found and what we've learned from our own experience. That's about all we can do. But uh, I made a module at uh, nodes.net, and the way you get to it is with uh, <coughs> radhealth.nodes.net. should take you there. This is the actual URL, but you can just type radhealth.nodes.net, and it'll take you there. All right, so <coughs> this has a number of different resources in it, and uh, we could start with Dr. Cousins. I like this quote, Dan. Did you read this? This this quote, uh, this quote he has yeah, here. We, we live in an age of headlines and sound bites. The Internet is packed full of information, but typically runs low on wisdom. This is the reason I write such long and comprehensive blogs. My work is becoming known for its in-depth analysis of today's issues. And so he goes on and talks about it. But what he does here is he gives us a lot of information about what you can do to improve your body's ability to deal with radiation. And here's what we're getting from Fukushima. We're getting uh, iodine-131, cesium-134, cesium-137, uranium-238, and xenon-133. And he says, Vietnam, which is 4,000 kilometers away from Fukushima, is now reporting an increase in uranium-238 in pine needles. In other words, this radiation gets into the environment and then it gets into the food. And one of the first places it shows up is in cow's milk, or anything that comes from a cow, right? So, uh, radiation in milk has already been reported, he says, in Phoenix, Arizona, Spokane, Washington, Montpelier, Vermont, as well as Los Angeles, California. So this radiation goes into the environment, goes into the jet stream, comes around the earth, and drops down in the rain. Mostly it comes out in rain, but it can come out at any time. And uh, so one of the first things to do, and, and this is a behavior thing, is stay out of the rain. <laughs> if you're going to go out in the rain, take an umbrella. Don't worry about looking like a sissy. Uh, don't get the radiation on you, and uh, if you do get it on you, wash yourself. And don't wear those clothes, wash those clothes. In other words, there's a whole different consciousness that needs to be developed if you're going to be living in a radioactive world. And even though they say that the radioactivity has been reduced greatly from Fukushima, it's still coming out, and it could get worse at any time. That molten blob of lava that they have over there is heading for the water table. And when it gets there, it will probably send a whole lot of very hot radioactive steam into the environment. They're building those tents. That's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that, that, that's a certainty, basically, is that... Uh, they don't have control of the situation. Not at all. And, and at some point, it is going to break through the water table, and it's going to do the worst thing. It's the kind of syndrome that's described. Um, the thing that the other on the on the flip side is that walking around worrying about rain and the environment, and assuming that you're in a radioactive situation, can be more unhealthy to you than the actual threat in the U.S. anyway, not in Fukushima. Well, we don't, we don't know. That's the bottom line, because the government's not telling us. That's correct. And using the monitoring that's available on the uh, Internet is a good idea. But as I've been trying to impress on whoever will listen, um, making your own radioactive... Ra radiation detector is, a, is an alternative to make it in terms of making the proper decisions about what needs to be done and if Steve will bring up my I radiation will bring it up. detector that I found uh, on the internet that I had heard about when I was taking physics in, in college um, it's it's actually easier to make than the, uh, this the is directions it. that are given uh, no that's not it um, a fall, homemade fallout there meter. There it is. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, it, it, it's, it gives it to you in baby steps on how to make it, and it actually seems a little silly uh, because it was made so long ago, but it does work. 
and it and it will detect with a surprising amount of accuracy the uh, the real radiation you need to worry about, which is the um, uh, gamma rays and the uh, neutron radiation. Uh, alpha and beta are less of a threat, but this will detect the really heavy duty stuff. And look at how and look at how it looks there. It's really simple. It's and indeed, I'd like to add that there is a feature that they do not indicate in this these directions that's available to everybody and anybody, and that is it requires a static charge in order to be activated and measure uh, the environment radiation. And that static charge, they, they suggest that you use uh, tape. When you unwind uh, regular tape, uh, scotch tape. Masking tape or freezer tape. No, no. Is that what it said? Right here it says. I thought, uh, okay. Band-Aid so tape, masking tape, or freezer tape, or scotch transparent tape. Yeah, scotch, it'll create a static charge. Well, there's a far, far easier way to do that, and that is to go out and get a lighter that uses a piezoelectric uh, flicker instead of um, a flint steel flicker. And they're anywhere. You can get them at any convenience store. And you take it apart, and it'll provide all the static charge you need uh, to charge this uh, radiation detector. And this detector you can make with household ingredients. I mean, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good uh, specific directions they give you. Let me just give this very specific. Yes. This direction. This this is the address here: nodes.net slash Steve Moyer colon rad detection. The the meta link is detect.nodes.net. We need to move along, yeah. Dan. We got seven minutes into it, and we're only eight I minutes understand. left. I understand. Go ahead, but it's all there. Yeah, find it here. It's under Make a Detector, and uh, you can make your own homemade radiation detector. That's important. Uh, I want to get back to the uh, things you can do in terms of food. Oh, here's one: spirulina. No, it's sprout teen. Oh, sproutina. It contains a nutritional benefits of sprouts, hemp, fruit, and vegetable superfoods. Now, I, I don't know. I don't have any way of evaluating whether the, these things are actually going to help you. Goji berries, hemp, sprouts, uh, lucuma, lucuma. You ever hear of lucuma? Uh, no, I've not heard of lucuma. It's a tropical fruit native to regions of South America. It's known for high levels of beta carotene, niacin, iron plus, and other vitamins and minerals. Anything that boosts your natural immunosystem is a good idea. And the, the three things that I tell people about constantly, and it sounds too simple, is the vitamin A, vitamin C, and zinc glutamate. Yeah, zinc is Glut very good. Glutamate, okay? That combination boosts your, ability, your body's ability to heal itself uh, I guess of pretty much anything um, and then there's the healing ability and then there's the protection ability and the protection ability simply put is uh, fiber I hate to say this but it's really simple uh, fiber will flush particles that you ingest through breathing or through eating uh, out your system to a large degree uh, the more fiber you have in your system, the less goes uh, of the radioactive particles goes into your system. So, and then there's iodine. Uh, the, the, you know, people tell p people to take iodine, potassium iodide. Right. Uh, if you satisfy your body with iodine that is not radioactive, then your body's not going to go out and start grabbing radioactive iodine. But you shouldn't so think you that that's taking care of the whole problem. No, it doesn't, because there's cesium and there's uh, strontium, and those go into your body, and uh, that's why bone meal is such a good idea. If you're taking healthy bone meal, um, your body will use that, and it will be less attracted to other items that will that are attracted to your bones, which is strontium and cesium, right. cesium in particular. So. If, you, if you're doing healthy sources of minerals and healthy sources of iodine, then your body will be less inclined to 
kick in the iodine that free you active in your environment. You know, it occurs to me, Dan, just a little side note here, is that we really ought to spend more time and energy on researching what can be done to improve our ability to deal with radiation in the body. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that there's a lot of uh, scientific research going on in that way. I think they put most of their money into treatment of the diseases, like cancer, for example. I have a lot to say about that, but uh, well, I'm going to say a little I'm bit. Gonna, <laughs> well, yes, I'm going to re, I'm going to reiterate AC and zinc. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm fanatical about it. That particular combination just protects your body. Uh, it, it, it gives your uh, immuno system most of what it needs, other than protein, to protect itself. And then there are people who recommend eating certain kinds of clay edible clays. Well, that's that's another method of, of purging your system of, of toxins. And I have no problem with that. Um, but once the toxins get into your system, then you need your immuno system to kick in and do what it's supposed to do. And it will protect you against a variety of things, including at least reasonable levels of radiation. I mean, if you're hit by, you know, a huge gamma burst, there's nothing you can do. But, um, you know, low levels of radiation, your body is capable of dealing with. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, I'm a big believer in coenzyme Q10. I'm going to slip that in there. Q, Q enzyme Q10 is great for metabolism. Um, and when you have a, a healthy metabolism, everything works better. Um, no problem. And uh, it's, a, it's a great antioxidant. I mean, it's it, and part of pro what happens with radiation when it gets in your body is it causes yes, it causes free radicals. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's. But also, A is an antioxidant. Um, selenium, vitamin E. Oh, I, I'm still doing research on vitamin E, and uh, I have no problem with people taking 400 uh, IU's of uh, vitamin E every day. I do uh, most that, most of the time. That, that, that is very protective of in terms of antioxidants. In fact, it's considered better than C in some circles. Oh, yeah. And there are many sources of uh, iodine, by the way. Uh, you mentioned uh, seaweed and kelp. I bought some powdered kelp at the food co-op here in Burlington, Vermont. And so I take that. Uh, that's Kelp what, is great. Yeah, kelp is no. great. Spirulina, too. You, you don't get it from a radioactive source <laughs> like Fukushima. Well, that's true. Um, I, I think it's pre. We got two minutes left in this video, uh, okay. so let's go. Is there anything else here? Green Med Info was pretty good, I think. So you can come to this site, and you get here with radhealth.nodes.net, or you can type this whole thing in here: nodes.net slash Steve Moyer colon radhealth. And there's loads of information for you if you want to find it on the internet. But it isn't made easy, and it isn't coming from official sources like the government. It's coming from people, right? And I think I uh, think the government is trying to. Pro my inter my opinion is the government's trying to protect us so that we don't overreact. Oh, here's the list I was looking for. Look at this list, Dan. Potassium iodide, apple pectin. That's another one. Cur yes, that's another fiber. That's a soluble fiber. Curcumin. That's like a spice, right? Curcumin. Cumin. Yes, cumin. I would have to research more, but I've heard some good things about it. And flavonoids, vitamin E. Well, I'm I'm a fanatic about flavonoids. They're very important. Very good. We've got 50 seconds left. Calendula. That's a that's a herb, isn't it? Calendula. That one I have not heard. And seaweed and holy basil and vitamin C and echinacea and ginkgo biloba and resveratrol. I do that. Resveratrol is yeah. supposed to keep you young, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, carotenoids and zeolite. That works. Zeolite internally? I've yeah, heard of you that. can take it internally. Nice. Well, and look well, at that list. really, really good at sucking up stuff. Yeah. Holy smoke. There's a long list of things you can take. And, uh, you know, this is the list that needs to be investigated. We need to figure out what exactly works here and when and under what conditions. We've got... Oh, no I could sit down and research... Five seconds, time. four seconds, say something. 
Good night. Good night. God bless.